أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والآسر إن الإنسان لفي خوص إلا الذين آمن وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم In previous class I explained three major classes of enzyme assays I stated that enzyme assays are laboratory methods for measuring enzyme activity. I also pointed out that ultraviolet visible spectrophotometry is the most widely used analytical method for measurement of enzyme activity. Today, I'm going to explain the basics of ultraviolet visible spectrophotometry regarding using Beer Lambert law and equation in calculation of enzyme activity. You may be familiar with this equation. This is Beer-Lambert equation, but how this equation is derived and obtained. If we have a transparent or non-light absorbing cell with a length of L containing a homogeneous light absorbing liquid and pass a monochromatic light through it, the intensity of light will decrease from I0 to I. I0 is the intensity of incident light and I is the intensity of transmitted light. Before 1729, Pierre Bouguer, and then in 1760, Johann Heinrich Lambert showed that at a given concentration of a homogeneous light absorbing liquid, the intensity of transmitted light decreases exponentially with an increase in light path length. The respective equation is I equals I0 multiplied by E to negative K1L, or the ratio of I to I0 equals E to negative K1L. In 1852, August Beer showed that at a given light path length, the intensity of transmitted light decreases exponentially with an increase in the concentration of a homogeneous uh, light absorbing liquid. The respective equation is I equals I0 multiplied by E to negative K2C or the ratio of I to I0 equals E to negative K2C. Combination of these two equations gives I to I0 equals E to negative KCL. K is the new constant and uh, equals K1 multiplied by K2. By definition, transmittance or T equals I to I0, or the ratio of the intensity of transmitted light to the uh, intensity of incident light. By replacing I to I0 ratio by T or transmittance, we will have transmittance equals E to negative KCL. Let's do some algebraic manipulation on this equation. Okay, taking natural logarithm from both sides of this equation gives natural logarithm of transmittance equals natural logarithm of E to negative KCL. Solving the right side of this equation gives natural logarithm of transmittance equals negative KCL multiplied by natural logarithm of E. Natural logarithm of E equals 1. So natural logarithm of transmittance equals negative KCL. Converting natural logarithm to base 10 logarithm gives 2.303 base 10 logarithm of transmittance equals negative KCL. Transferring 2.303 from left side to the right side of this equation gives based on logarithm of transmittance equals negative KCL divided by 2.303. Transferring negative sign from right side to the left side of this equation gives negative based on logarithm of transmittance equals KCL divided by 2.303. By definition, absorbance is defined as negative based on logarithm of transmittance or based on logarithm of inverse transmittance. So absorbance equals negative based on logarithm of transmittance equals based on logarithm of inverse transmittance equals KCL divided by 2.303. 
K divided by 2.303 is constant and called epsilon. And when it is expressed in liter per mole centimeter, it is termed molar attenuation coefficient. The older terms of molar attenuation coefficient are molar absorption coefficient, molar extinction coefficient, and molar absorptivity. By replacing uh, K divided by 2.303 by epsilon, uh, we will have absorbance equals negative based on logarithm of transmittance equals based on logarithm of inverse transmittance equals epsilon CL, or in brief, absorbance equals epsilon CL. This is beer lambert equation, and the respective plot is linear when absorbance is depicted versus concentration. Okay, so far we have reached to beer lambert equation, but uh, how can we employ this equation in calculation of enzyme activity? In a previous class, I stated that the measurement of enzyme activity should be performed within the constant reaction rate region of the reaction rate curve. Thus, we should measure the absorbance of substrate or product within the linear region of reaction rate curve. Solving the Lambert equation for concentration gives C equals A divided by epsilon L. Chains of absorbance of product are recorded. The difference between A2 and A1 is called delta A. Delta A is proportional to the amount of product formed. Thus, in the numerator of uh, this equation, delta A should be placed instead of A. So we will have C equals delta A divided by epsilon L. Delta A is recorded within the respective time interval or delta T. Delta T is the difference between T2 and T1. So delta T should be included in this equation. Both sides of this equation should be multiplied by 1 divided by uh, delta T. So uh, we will have 1 divided by delta T multiplied by C equals uh, delta A divided by epsilon L multiplied by 1 divided by delta T. Amount of dilution of sample in reaction medium or the ratio of uh, total volume of reaction medium uh, to uh, sample volume should be included in this equation. So we will have VT divided by VS multiplied by 1 divided by delta T multiplied by C equals delta A divided by epsilon L multiplied by 1 divided by delta T multiplied by VT uh, divided by VS. Uh, again, both sides of this equation should be multiplied by the ratio of VT to VS. If the sample is initially diluted, the initial dilution of sample should be included in this equation. So uh, we will have dilution factor multiplied by uh, Vt divided by Vs multiplied by 1 divided by delta T multiplied by C equals uh, delta A divided by epsilon L uh, multiplied by 1 divided by delta T multiplied by Vt divided by Vs multiplied by the dilution factor. Again, both sides of this equation should be uh, multiplied by dilution factor. For verification of this equation, let's do dimensional analysis by unit cancellation of the parameters. Okay, let's first check the left side of this equation. Dilution factor is unitless, and the ratio of Vt to Vs is unitless because both Vt and Vs have the same unit. Delta T has the unit of minute. I write it in denominator. Concentration has the unit of mole per liter. I write it in numerator. So 
the final unit of the left side of this equation is mole per minute liter. Keep it in your mind. For right side of this equation, dilution factor is unitless. The ratio of Vt to Vs uh, is unitless. Delta T has the unit of uh, minute. I write it in denominator. Delta A uh, is unitless because absorbance is unitless. Epsilon has the unit of liter per mole centimeter. I write it in denominator. L has the unit of centimeter. I write it in denominator. Centimeter is canceled by inverse centimeter. Uh, inverse mall goes to the numerator and change its sign. So the final unit of the right side of this equation is mall per minute liter. As you see, both sides of this equation have the same unit. So this equation uh, is correct. But enzyme activity is expressed in micromol per minute liter. So we need a correction factor to convert mole to micromole. It is 10 to the sixth. So both sides of this equation should be multiplied by 10 to the sixth. The left side of this equation is useless because uh, we don't know the concentration of product formed. Instead, we can use the right side of this equation for calculation of enzyme activity. Please pay attention to the example and solve the problem. Before you solve the problem, I draw your attention to some hints. This is a real example, case, and experiment. The activities of plasma and RBC cholinesterases of this case were measured by Elman's kinetic method. It means that the rate of enzymatic reaction was continuously monitored and recorded. If you want to measure cholinesterase activity by endpoint method, you should use a cholinesterase inhibitor to stop the enzymatic reaction. For example, quinidine sulfate inhibits the plasma cholinesterase. In previous class, I mentioned that the kinetic or continuous method has some advantage over endpoint or discontinuous method. Because we use kinetic method, it is not mandatory to use a double beam UV visible spectrophotometer. This is the plot of the change of absorbance at 410 nanometers in time. Elman's reagent for measurement of erythrocytic or RBC cholinesterase contains quinidine sulfate to inhibit the activity of plasma cholinesterase probably still present in the RBC sample after washing with normal saline. This is the plot of the change of absorbance at 410 nanometers in time. Masalaw ma'alaw manat tabi al-hudah.